If you're someone like me, who hasn't been living in Australia for too long, have you ever experienced the sudden craving for steamed dumplings that remind you of home but you couldn't find the proper steamers? Or if you happen to be a soup enthusiast, you struggled to find the right clay pot you've used back home? Luckily for us today, Australia is populated with Chinese groceries where you could get almost everything you need. I've just decided to throw a hot pot party tonight and here's what I've got. The special chopsticks, the pot, all sorts of soup base, bean curd, beef rolls, fish tofu and of course, coriander. But you're probably not aware that Chinese stores existed in Melbourne back in the gold rush period and that these stores had a multifunctional purpose. In front of us, this building at Melbourne's Chinatown is known as a regular gift shop, but you probably don't know about its glorious past. Back in the gold rush period, people would buy well-priced goods imported from overseas like China and Europe. Lots of Chinese migrants from that period were illiterate. Therefore, staffers in the Chinese stores offered the service of letter drafting, banking and translation. Later on, they even prepared and submitted migration documents for those in need. And if you wanted to travel, you could also get shipping tickets from here. These multifunctional Chinese stores were a very important part of the lives of early Chinese migrants. In a sense, these Chinese stores became a community space, meeting places where people hang out, drink tea, or even gamble. A one-stop shop, quite literally. Apart from the Chinese stores, another community activity that helped Chinese Australians bond over the years is Aussie Roos football, which is a truly iconic Australian sport. But did you know that the earliest record of Chinese Australians playing in charity football matches can be traced back over 150 years? In 1890, a local paper in Ballarat reported a football match between the Chinese miners and the Chinese market gardeners. The interest in the two teams and the game attracted a huge crowd, more than 5,000 spectators, and even raised a hundred pounds for charity. The follow-up coverage of such sporting events also indicated that some local teams even learned Chinese phrases so they can play football with the Chinese footballers. Fast forward to the 1930s, the Young Chinese League, or YCL, was founded in Melbourne with the aim of promoting a better understanding of Chinese Australians in a broader Australian community. Football matches were one of the common ways for them to achieve that. You could join the YCL as long as one parent was of Chinese heritage. This silver-plated trophy was awarded to the best YCL player in 1955. In which year did you join the YCL Football Club? I joined in 1964. I played for 22 years. I started playing on the wing. Later on, I played in the centre, which I loved. Towards the end, they put me in the back line because I got a bit slow. What was the most memorable moment back in the football time? I think the times we shared against different teams and the, the socialising we did, we used to invite a team back straight after the game for a barbecue with us to the South Melbourne Joss House, maybe two or three times a year. And for $2, you could get chops, sausages and a salad. And for $1, a large bottle of beer. So they were great times. What's in this folder? I've been collecting over the years the football fixtures which show the teams we've played, the venues, the dates, and the scores. Ooh. And you can see from these fixtures that there are lots of different teams over the years. In 1941, we played against a team from the Bookmakers. The Bookmakers. And another team we played was the Past and Present Boxers Association. That's so many memories. And I also brought along some other things to show you. Yes. 
Oh, this wow. original jumper. That's the original YCL jumper. Yes, it's 55 years old and there's a lucky number on the back. Football was a terrific pastime in that era because there were no personal computers, no video games for kids to play, no mobile phones, and for a long time, there was no colour television even. As a migrant, joining a group of like-minded friends where you feel a sense of belonging could be a rewarding experience. What about you? Which communities make you feel at home in Australia?